welcome to my pretend cooking show. My name is Dina Mitchell and this is my kitchen. Prego, are you still making your pumpkin pie with puree from a can? Well, I'm gonna show you how to make it really simply using the sugar pie pumpkin. Also, some great pumpkin seed recipes. <laughs> but first, let me move this little pumpkin pie test I'm doing. I have the Costco <laughs> copycat recipe. I've got the old fashioned Libby's and I've got the Julia Child's using a chocolate crust. All of these using homemade pumpkin puree. And these are three of some of the top recipes for pumpkin pie. I'm gonna try them all head to head and see which one I really like better and go with that every year or maybe two. First, let's start off with the pumpkin puree. We're not gonna need this canned stuff anymore. First thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut off the very top and make it flat. And the pumpkin is pretty dense, so don't worry about going through all at one time. Just make little cuts as you go along. There we go. And this is a, a sugar pie pumpkin. So this one's really for pumpkin pies. It's, uh, it's a little sweeter, has a tremendous flavor to it. And you can get these, I saw these at Whole Foods, I've seen them at Sprouts, and they're pretty great. The seeds are a little bit smaller too. So now I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna make a hole straight down the middle. And I'm just gonna pull the knife carefully. <laughs> I'm gonna try again. <laughs> there we go. It is really dense. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go down the other way. Now obviously be careful with this part. Don't worry about going all the way through because at this point I can just crack it open. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen around the membrane and make it a little easier to scoop out. So this little extra time is gonna make it easier when it comes to getting the seeds out. And I have been testing these recipes, so the bake time is a little bit different because these seeds are a little smaller than the regular ones, but man, super good. I've learned some tricks with that too. I'm gonna to share that with you. So I've got that one. Let me trim this one again around the membrane. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm just gonna make it that much easier so I don't have to spend too much time, hopefully, scooping out. And this has always been a fun job for kids to do, scooping out. Um, or at least we think it's fun for them, right? But it's not always fun for us adults, especially if you're making as many pies as I have been this weekend, testing so many. Okay. So I've got that pretty well cut around there. And now I am going to loosen around the seeds. And I have a bowl here with just filled with water. And that is where I'm gonna put the seeds. I have a, another one here for just using for the pulp. Okay, now on this one, gonna try to loosen. I'm just trying to do as much work in advance that I can to make it that much easier. Okay, so that's good for this. I am going to move this cutting board over here. All right, so the seed recipe that I'm gonna show you, I've tested it both ways. And you don't have to dry out the seeds overnight like we used to on newspaper as kids. You really don't need to. It's not going to make any difference. The only difference is um, bake time. So you can cut that, get rid of that little step. Let's see. Okay. So just to try to make it a little easier. So the, first of all, the seeds are going to float, but I'm going to just kind of make it a little easier just plucking off some of these seeds and soaking. So why we soak the pumpkin seeds, you don't have to, it's just easier on your digestive system to soak them if you soak them overnight. It's not gonna change the flavor at all and you definitely don't need to. But then again, we're supposed to kind of soak all nuts, aren't we, right? Cashews, almonds, all that sort of stuff. Uh, I usually don't unless I'm making nut milk. Okay. 
So I've got most of these off of here, just a few stragglers. But for the sake of time, I'll let this one go. And you know what? Actually, I'm just kind of rinse it off and I bet you they all come off. Yep. Yep. And that is all seeds there. Now I'm going to kind of do the same with this one. Kind of put it in the water a little bit and everything kind of just should just come off pretty easily. Um, pumpkin puree. It's not just pumpkin pies. How about some pumpkin raviolis? I've had some of the best pumpkin raviolis in my life. It may have been my first time too, but every, every time I went back was in Florence. And this is the season. And um, I'm gonna be sharing that recipe soon because it's amazing. Okay. What recipes do you guys make with pumpkin? This pumpkin puree, you start making it yourself. You can can it, um, not can it, probably could can it, freeze it. I use the superior cubes and I freeze it um, up to six months and I freeze it in like one cup portion. So I can easily just take two cups out and make a pie or maybe a bread. Okay, so that is pretty good. And as I showed you before, I'm just gonna dip it in the water and any more that are on there should come off. Okay, cool. Oh, I still have this one that I need to go through. And because I used that knife and went around, there is some pulp that I need to get, but not much. And the same with this one. But I do need to get it down, get it off before I roast them. So I'm just gonna take the spoon and just kind of dig really close to the membrane. A couple seeds in there. Boom. One over there too. Hmm. All right. That one is sufficiently almost clean. <laughs> this one looks like it's not going to be as hard. Just might be a couple scrapes. Um, you know, I think a long time ago, you know, we would put our jack o' lanterns out for trick or treaters and all week, and you'd cut up a pumpkin and put a scary face and put a candle in it and such. And then after that, people were making pumpkin pies. I don't know, that to me that's kind of gross. It's been out in the elements. Uh, I totally am a big opponent for uh, waste not, want not. But I'd rather you just use a pumpkin, like either use a real one and don't cut it, or I don't know, get a plastic or a wood one. Make a scarecrow, but don't cook that pumpkin that's been out in the elements. All right, so I've got two clean pumpkins. Let's make roasted, where are we there? Oh, here, roasted pumpkin. So I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna turn them upside down. I have the oven preheated at 400 degrees and I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil on here because it's gonna help the skin slip off super easy. And I'm gonna put it in the oven at 400. I bet you I have one in there already ready. Oh wow, look at that. Seriously cracked myself up. <laughs> All right. All right, so 400 for 45 degrees. Now, let's take a look at this. It's definitely hot. <laughs> So first of all, this smells amazing. And look how pretty those are. And this is just one of those little pumpkins. Now watch how easy this is. <laughs> Let me get this. Use this. I usually do it with a fork. So you don't have a fork over here? Let me get one. Okay. So these have been sitting in the oven a little bit longer than I normally would because this literally just pops off and this is the skin. And um, you can see it's still steamy. Woo, oh. And the olive oil is what helped it come off. Let me see if I can get this one off. So this is roasted and ready to go. And I am going to puree it either in your food processor or blender, which I'm gonna show you. 
and just get off all of that skin. And I like to do it when it's hot because it just comes off that much easier. All right, skin off. Oh, and by the way, these little crispy parts, so yum. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. All right. Yeah, the crispy parts of the pumpkin itself. All right. Make a couple cuts in this just to make it easier. It's already roasted. I don't need to do anything. Oh, here, this part's super amazing. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm -mm. Roasted pumpkin. Okay. So my seeds. Before I go to this, my seeds. These are have already flown, uh, floated to the top, and. I am going to scoop these out and put them in this little pan. And I'm going to boil it. So this is about a cup of seeds. So one little pumpkin here is going to give you more than enough for a pumpkin pie and one cup of seeds. And you see they all kind of like just float to the top now. And there's like little pieces of pulp, but it just comes out super easy. And you're going to have several opportunities to... Okay, so I am going to put this on the stove, bring it to a boil, and let it simmer for about 15 minutes with one tablespoon of salt. And this is just gonna start layering those flavors. Super yum. So I have one here already ready. Need to do with this is lay out a towel and lay these out and just you don't have to be totally dry but you're just, just going to dry them with a the towel because we're gonna add the seasoning and I want the seasoning to stick to there and if they're really wet they're really it'll make it harder to do that all right so I am going to keep those there just for a second while I make the pulp all right Vitamix blender, of course. And that little brown is not the, um, that's the good part I was showing you. It's not the skin, because you don't want to puree this with the skin. And you're not gonna add any water to it if you don't have, sorry, this is a good part. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna save that one. So good, so, so good. If you don't have Vitamix, um, you just may have to struggle with it a little. Just keep tapping it, getting the air bubble out a little bit of the time, but it'll eventually work. Or use your food processor. You don't have to do it that long, but you just need to puree it. Yum. Okay. One for me. Hmm. Okay. Let's get this going.
alone in the middle and I know that the puree is beneath. So where's my superior cubes? You can use the superior cubes, which I love these one cup portions because then I freeze it and once it's solid, I put it in little freezer bags, super great. And that will work up to, I think six months. Or you can just keep it in here and it'll last up to a week in the refrigerator. And this makes some great pumpkin pie. And by the way, you're gonna find that it's a little tough getting all of your ingredients out of here. So what I usually do is kind of make my mock Starbucks pumpkin spice latte. So with the remainder of the pumpkin I can't get out of here, I try to leave like about a half a cup or so. I will throw in one cup of coffee and close to a half a cup, a little bit less of uh, whipping cream and a little coconut nectar. Oh my gosh, super good. It's my mock Starbucks. All right. Um, I'm just putting this all in. I know I have pumpkin on my face. <laughs> okay, so that is good to go. Let's get back to these amazing pumpkin seeds. So of course, where did they go? Oh, they're here. <laughs> of course you can just do, um, if you just want them salted, I like to do them with a tablespoon of olive oil and a tablespoon of butter and then uh, a tablespoon of salt. And don't worry about putting too much salt in because you cooked it with salt. The, barely anything was in there at all. Okay. So I am going to show you my newest addiction, which is this kind of pumpkin spice flavoring. So good. Such a great little snack. Can't get enough of it. And it's fairly easy to make. <laughs> All right. These are ready to go. <laughs> so I'm going to do half a teaspoon of coconut oil and it's melted. So, just a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to do a tablespoon of maple syrup. And a tablespoon of sugar. Maybe a tablespoon plus. <laughs> pumpkin pie seasoning, about a teaspoon or so. Uh, sometimes I'll add extra cinnamon with a pumpkin pie, which is usually, um, gets cinnamon and ginger and nutmeg, uh, and maybe some clove. And then a little bit of salt, like a half teaspoon, just to balance all the flavors. And I'm just gonna give that a quick stir. stir. So good, and then I'm gonna put this in a 300 degree oven for 45 minutes, exactly. And the, again, these are a lot smaller than your average, so it doesn't take that long. And I found that it is best to use a pan lined with parchment paper. I have tin foil under there because, because I have this little seasoning, sometimes it'll get a little bit messy, but you really don't have to worry about turning these other ones, like just your salt or salt and pepper or some of the other recipes I'll share with you, um, when you have to go in there and stir it, this one you really don't. Um, all those, bake time is the same, 45 minutes. Okay. Let me show you this end result. <laughs> Another excuse for me to eat. So this is that recipe I just made. It's super, super yummy. And it's like pumpkin spice. Mmm. It's sweet. It's great. <laughs> Thanks for watching my pretend cooking show. My name is Dina Mitchell. Please like and subscribe. And stay tuned for my next episode where we get to try all these three pumpkin pies. Thanks for joining, guys. Ciao.